Oh, good morning. Good morning. You come to see about the room, huh? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I'm Marie Buckholder. Oh, how are you, dear? Fine, thank you. You're from the university, uh, huh? Yes, I am. I hope I didn't get you up too early. Oh, no, honey, that's all right. I had to get up anyway. It's right up here. Is this the first room you look for? Uh, yes, it is. Well, I hope you like it. Oh, I'm sure I will. Like we, we, we haven't any, any children, you know. Come right in. Right in here. This is the room, honey. See? You got a closet? Nice big closet. And a lamp for reading. Oh, I'll have to get you a bulb. It's usually more quiet. I guess a student needs it quiet. But, you know, today being Saturday, the Kaufman kids is home from school. The view isn't too important. It ain't too much money, is it, honey? Oh, no, the price seems all right. Nice bed. A wonderful bed. Good mattress. I know, because I slept here myself. Oh, you did? Well, not lately, but my husband used to be sickly. But he's all right now. Well, uh, I don't know, Mrs. Delaney. I'll have to think it over. I don't think you'll find anything much closer to the university. Oh, I know. It's very convenient, but... And the bathroom's nice. I just had it repainted three years ago. And if you came, well, we could put a shelf up here, you know, another shelf for your towels and things. And that's, uh... Oh, that's our room. My husband's a sleeper. I'd show it to you. You know, my husband's a doctor. He's an, uh, not a real M.D. He's a chiropractor, but he's got a real good practice. If you was interested in the front room, honey, why, I could speak to my husband about it. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't think of it. It's, well, it's only that I just started looking and I feel that I should look around a oh, bit. Oh, sure. You know, you could get your own meals. Kitchen privileges, I think they call it. And, and I could get you your own key, you know. And, and you could just come and go. That's my sewing room. <laughs> a little well, upset now. I will think it over, Mrs. Delaney. You could just use the whole house, you know, as if it was yours. We wouldn't interfere, because we're very quiet here. We don't have much company. Oh. It's only a couple of blocks, you know, to the bus. Oh, yes, it's very convenient. Quite likely I will be back, only let me know. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yes, I will. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Bye. Who's that, Lola? Oh, morning, Daddy. I didn't hear you. You know what I just thought I saw? A little Sheba. But it was just some little gray dog. Who was that upstairs with you? Oh, she's an awful sweet little thing. Her name is Marie Buckholder. She's a student at the university. You know, it's funny. I keep thinking every little dog I see is Sheba. What did Miss Buckholder want? She came to see about renting the upstairs bedroom. I called up the university. You know, Daddy. After all, six dollars ain't to be sneezed at. What are you thinking of? But, Doc, lots of people rent rooms. Not the Delaney's. I didn't mean to upset you, Daddy. I just thought... Honey, I don't want anybody here. Are you mad at me? You know, it ain't like before. Nobody'd see you getting drunk, because you don't get drunk anymore. When I remember the way you used to be, always drinking and getting into fights. Please, baby. I'm sorry, Daddy. You got to understand, honey. Sure, I know I'm fine today. And today, I know I can control myself. That's enough. Oh, sure, Doc. Gee, it must have been after three when you got home last night. Where was you working? At the jail or the hospital? At the jail. No fruit juice? Oh, sure. Nice and cold. Oh, you should sure drink it up fast. You know what the doctor said. I'll stock in a lot today, Daddy. I was sure there was still some left. 
Doc, can I go with you to the AA meeting? For y your birthday party? Sure, baby. Wish I had some orange juice. I'll go down to the store and get you some. Oh, don't bother. Oh, it won't take a minute. I just gotta change my shoes. Yeah, but I can get some on the way to work. Oh, no, Daddy. Let me do it for you. I'll be right back. It'll take a second. I'm Miss Buckholder. Mrs. Delaney's out right now. I've come back about renting the room, and uh, not exactly the upstairs room, but if Mrs. Delaney could see her way to letting me have this one, well, it's uh, really what I sort of had in mind. Uh, more like a studio than a bedroom. I was here just a few minutes ago, and I got to thinking, you see, I'm studying art, and, well, this would work out just great. Do you think she'd consider it? Oh, the only thing is, if I'd be in your way down here. It's rather far from the bathroom. Oh, well, what's running up and downstairs? It keeps my legs slim. You know, as a matter of fact, I'd probably be less in your way. At least if I have to run in and out and it's late, I won't be bothering you. Um, Mrs. Delaney said that I could move in right away. Right away? Oh, well, uh, then, then why don't you? Well, you sure she wouldn't mind about us being this room? It's my house. Oh, gee, that's just wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, D Dr. Delaney. Um, Mrs. Delaney said that two weeks in advance would be satisfactory. Oh, well, th that can wait later. No, I insist. You tell her that I'll be moving in around 4 o'clock and... Oh, gee, thanks so much, Dr. Delaney. Oh, I uh, hope I didn't disturb you. I didn't hear you. I thought you'd gone. I rented your room for you, Lola. Oh, did that nice little girl come back? Your sewing room downstairs. I guess you'll have to take your things out. Oh, sure. There's your first two weeks' rent. Oh, thanks, Daddy. <laughs> the money will come in handy. Good evening. May, uh, may I have your attention, please? Good evening, folks. My name is Ed Anderson. I'm an alcoholic. Tonight, I'm very happy to welcome you to the AA. And to those of you who are new here, I hope you find what I found when I walked in that door five years ago. We have a few birthdays tonight. But before that, let's have all the alcoholics raise their hands. Thank you. And now, those of you who are here for the first time, Good to have you here. And now for the birthday babies. Elmo Chester, four years. <laughs> Pearl Stimson, three years. Henrietta Colby, two years. Doc Delaney, one year. <laughs> Elmo. It's a long time between drinks. <laughs> Uh, 
Pearl. Three years ago this time, I wouldn't have the wind to do this. Henrietta. I don't know. Well, I don't know what to say, except, well, I thank God and all my friends here who've helped me. Doc? I just never thought I'd make it. Neither did I. Hi there. Hello. I bet I know who you're writing to. I got a real long one from him today. See? Four pages. Was it as interesting as usual? Especially interesting. You hear that, Daddy? Doc? She got a letter from Bruce. Bruce? As if you didn't know who that was. You hear that, Murray? It's the boy she's engaged to. Oh, the young man back home. Well, not exactly engaged. I just got my eye on him, that's all. Well... You sound tired, Doc. What'd you see tonight? Oh, we didn't go to a movie. We... We went to see some friends. Night. I'll be up in a minute, Doc. Did Bruce get his raise? Uh-huh. He's getting $300 a month in expenses, and he gets to fly everywhere he goes. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, I guess you're busy. Night, Marie. Good night, Mrs. Delaney. What about a little music, huh? I always think music helps with letter writing. should really marry that fella. He makes $300 a month and he gets to fly every place. Perhaps she wants to get an education first. Drawn pictures? That's what she studies the most of. Honey, do me a favor, please. I don't want Marie to know about me being an AA. But Ed Anderson says that's the first thing the AAs teach you, to admit you're an alcoholic. I'll tell everybody when I'm more sure of myself. Well, you certainly ought to be sure after tonight. I was so proud of you. You look so nice standing up there in front of all those people. This too much air, Daddy? Fine. I'm too tired to wash my face tonight. Did you? She must spend a fortune on bath powders and salts. Who? That bathroom smells like a lilac factory. Oh, yeah. I like it. I dreamt about little Sheba again last night, Doc. You did? Yeah. It was just as real. I put her on a leash to take her downtown to do some shopping. And everybody on the street turned around to look at her. And I was so proud. And then we started to walk. And the block started going by so fast. Poor little Sheba couldn't keep up with me. And suddenly I looked around and she was gone. Ain't that funny? I looked everywhere for her, but I couldn't find her. I stood there feeling kind of afraid. Do you suppose that means anything, Doc? Daddy, are you asleep? Dreams are funny. Do you suppose it means little Sheba's gonna come back? I don't know, baby. I miss her so. She was such a cute little puppy. Wasn't she cute? Yeah, she was cute. 
Remember how white and fluffy she used to be after I gave her a bath? And how her little hind end used to wag from side to side when she walked? I remember. I just hated to see her grow old, didn't you, Daddy? Little Shiva should have stayed young forever. Some things should never grow old. That's what it amounts to, I guess. Hi. Hello. How's our star border this morning? Fine. Want your breakfast? Just my fruit juice. Ah, you look lovelier than a spring garden. You sure you wouldn't like a roll? I put some in the oven. Oh, thanks. I'm in a hurry. I gotta get to the library and check out some special books before anyone else gets them. Yes, you want to study hard, Marie. Be a fine artist someday. Paint lots of beautiful pictures. I remember a picture my mother had over the mantelpiece at home. A picture of a cathedral in a sunset. One of those cathedrals in Europe somewhere. It made you feel religious just to look at it. Well, these books aren't for art. They're for biology. I have an exam. Is that enough? Fine. Thanks. See you later. Morning, dear. I can't sleep late like I used to. I used to be able to sleep till noon if I wanted to. Yeah. I can't anymore. I don't know why. Habits change. Maybe it's the spring. Everything else is stirring. Why shouldn't you? Ah, oh, Doc, I should be getting your breakfast instead of your getting mine. Did you say your prayer, Daddy? Yes, baby. And did you ask God to be with you all day and keep you strong? Yes, baby. Then God will be with you, Docky. Say your prayer for me, Daddy. I love to hear it. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom always to know the difference. Oh, that's so nice. You're so pretty. When I think of the way you used to be, Daddy, always drinking and getting into fights, I was always so scared, I never knew what was gonna happen. I don't know what I'd have done without you. I'm so proud of you. You've been sober over a year. Mr. Crothers coming back to the office this morning. Mr. Crook? Oh, he said he never would. Well, it just goes to show you. People are nicer than you think. They always give you another chance. Oh, sure. Maybe, maybe you could take me to a movie tonight, huh? I may have to do some 12th step work tonight. Again? It's important, honey. You know, you help yourself by helping other alcoholics. You see, alcoholics are mostly disappointed men. Oh, sure, I know. You was never disappointed, were you, Doc? Important thing is not to dwell on the past. <clears throat> Live each day as it comes and stay sober doing it. Who are you going to help tonight? Some fellow they picked up on Skid Row. They have him down at the city hospital. I kind of dreaded. I thought you said it helped you. It does if you can stand it. I did some 12-step work down there myself once before. And they put the alcoholics in with the crazy people. Horrible. These men all twisted and shaking. Eyes all foggy and full of pain. There was some fellow there that had his hands clamped together so he wouldn't kill anyone. And there was a young man, just a young man, scratched his eyes out. Ah, oh, don't, Daddy. I think it's awful they take them there just because they get drunk. Well, they'll sober them up. That's the important thing. Let's not talk about it anymore. Maybe Marie can go to a movie with you tonight, hmm? Oh, no. She's probably going out somewhere with Turk. She shouldn't be going out with a fellow like Turk. I don't know why you say that, Daddy. Turk's nice. A fellow like that doesn't have any respect for nice young girls. You can tell that just by looking at him. 
You make out like every young girl was Jennifer Jones in a song of Bernadette. I just like to believe that nice young people like her are clean and decent. Hi. Oh, hi, honey. My, you're up early this morning. Don't you want any breakfast? Uh, no, I've had it. Thank you. Are you ready to leave, Doc? It's such a nice spring morning. Why don't you walk to the corner with me? Yeah, why don't you walk with her, Daddy? It'll do you good. All right, I might come home for lunch. Oh, fine. I'll fix something hot for you. I hope I'm not rushing you. Oh, not at all. Have a good day. That's all right, Daddy. Goodbye, you two. Have fun. Want to walk to the office with me? Oh, no, Daddy. I look terrible. I ain't even dressed. <laughs> kiss Daddy goodbye. Bye-bye, Daddy. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye, Dr. Delaney? Go on, Doc. I can't spend my time kissing all the girls. <laughs> Can I carry those for you? They're not heavy. I can manage. I guess it would look silly, a man my age, carrying your books. A lot of men your age go to school. Do they really? Well, I guess you've had your share of college. Well, how can you tell that? Oh, you can always tell when a man's educated. Besides, isn't that a Phi Beta Kappa key you're wearing? Oh, I haven't worn it in years. I found them in the drawer the other day. You're observant, Marie. Where'd you go? Mead Medical College. You did? Uh-huh. Most people never heard of it. If they know anything about medical colleges they have, why, it's to medicine what Harvard is to law. I had an uncle who went there. Do people usually go to me to become chiropractors? Well, I I didn't finish there. What happened? Well, I I just didn't finish. Did I understand you to say you take biology? Uh-huh. You like it? Oh, sure. What's more interesting than nature, and especially our own bodies? And speaking of bodies, my friend Turk. <laughs> well, I'm afraid this is where I have to leave you. Have a good day. Same to you, Marie. Bye. Hey, Turk! Well, if it isn't Mrs. Rembrandt. Got room for me, too, in your handlebars? Yeah. Hello there, Mrs. Kaufman. How are you today? Thank you, fine, Mrs. Delaney. Oh, you're the busiest woman I ever saw. <laughs> keeping busy is keeping happy. When you've got four kids to look after, you've got no time to sit around the house. No, I suppose not. But you don't hear me complain. Oh, no, you never complain. I wouldn't either if I had a little cutie like Gretchen. She's such a darling. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid my little doggie's gone for good, Miss Kaufman. I miss her so. The only way to keep from missing one dog is to get another. Oh, no, I never could find another little doggie as cute as little Sheba. I put an ad in the paper for two whole weeks, but nobody answered it. It's just like she vanished. Just vanished into thin air. That was months ago, Mrs. Delaney. You should get busy and forget her. You should get busy, Mrs. Delaney. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. As a matter of fact, I got something cooking now. See you later. Mm-hmm. for me. You know, sometimes I think you don't even know I live here. It's been two whole weeks since you brought me anything. You can't do any better than that. I'm going to have to get a new postman. <laughs> You'll have to get someone to write you some letters. Yeah. Nothing for you. Oh, I was just joking. You knew I was joking, didn't you? <laughs> I bet you're thirsty. Why don't you come in and I'll get you a nice cold glass of water, huh? Come on in and sit down and rest your feet for a while. I'll take you up on that. I've worked up quite a search. <laughs> well, you just sit down there. I won't be a minute. Be a minute. I want you to feel free to come in and ask me for a glass of water anytime you want it. Because that's what we're all here for, ain't it? To make each other comfortable? Thank you, ma'am. I hope you can't taste the cantaloupe. <laughs> is that what it is? I'll get you some fresh. Oh, no, no. This is fine. Sorry. You haven't been our postman very long, have you? You postmen have things pretty nice. I hear you get a nice pension from the government after you've been with it for 20 years. I think that's fine. And it's a good job, too. You know, you may get tired, but I think, I think it's good for a man to be outdoors and get a lot of exercise. You know, my husband is a chiropractor. He, he has to stay inside his office all day long. 
The only exercise he gets is rubbing people's backbones. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes his hands awful strong, you know? He's got the strongest hands you ever saw. But he's got a weak digestion. You want any more? Oh, no, thanks. You know, my husband is Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, he wouldn't mind if I told you. He's proud of it. He hasn't touched a drop in over a year. And do you know, all that time we've had a bottle of whiskey out in the kitchen. You know, just for company. He hasn't even gone near it. Doesn't even want to. You know, alcoholics can't drink like ordinary people. They're allergic to it. You know, they get started drinking and they can't stop. Liquor transforms them. But if they leave liquor alone, you know, they're perfectly all right. They're just like you and me. You should have seen Doc before he gave it up. Oh, he was awful. He lost all his patience. He didn't want to go down to the office. He just wanted to stay drunk all day long. And, but you wouldn't believe it if you saw him now. He's got all his patience back. He's doing just fine. Oh, I know, Dr. Delaney. I deliver mail to his office. He's a very fine man. Thanks. You don't drink, do you? No, just a few beers once in a while. Oh, I don't think that stuff is good for anybody. No. You got any kids? Yeah, you got three grandchildren. We don't have any. And, and we get these little toys in our boxes of breakfast foods. I usually save them for the Kaufman kids. But why don't you take it home to them? Oh, it's very kind. That's all right. Goodbye, Mr. Postman. I'm going to see that you get a letter if I have to write it myself. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Taboo. It's Taboo, radio listeners. Your 15 minutes of temptation. Won't you join me? Won't you leave behind your routine, the dull cares that make up your day-to-day -day existence, the little worries, the uncertainties, the confusions of the workaday world? And follow me, where pagan spirits hold sway, where life natives dance on a moon-enchanted isle, where palm trees sway with the restless ocean tide, restless, surging on the white shore. Won't you come along? But remember, it's taboo. Disturbing her. Oh, I didn't hear you come in. I was half asleep. I brought Turk home to pose for me. Um, in there, Turk. Pose? For my poster for the spring relays. I have to do it for life class. It's not going to take a minute to finish it. I had to grab him when I could. Lucky for you, I got my track pants on. <laughs> What's he going to do? Strip. Huh? Uh, down to like this. Oh, I thought you meant he was going to pose naked. <laughs> oh, men models seldom do. Is Turk a model? Well, you see, lots of the college athletes pose for us. Muscle men draw easy, and they like to be stared at, I guess. Oh. The women pose naked, and the men don't, huh? Men are more proper. Well, if it's all right for a woman, it ought to be for a man. It seems so, but the man always keeps covered. Are you ready? Is this all right? Um, over here, please. Hey, it's going to be tough not holding a javelin. What about the broom? Thanks, I'll manage. Oh, it'll be just the thing. Say, is she always around here like oh, this? She's not so bad. Now, look, I want your left foot here a little more this way. I'd much rather have you pose for me. It may not be long enough, but ain't that good, Marie? Well, that's fine. <laughs> here. It's nice of you to trouble yourself. Oh, I'm glad to help. <laughs> what about a little music? Nice, Marie. That's real artistic. <laughs> I wish I was artistic. <laughs> I'll 
get you something nice and cold to drink. Hey, can't you keep her out of here? She makes me feel undressed. Aren't you? Hasn't she ever seen a man before? Not a big, beautiful man like you, Turkey. You know? What? You're gonna get yourself into trouble. Hey, get right there. Hello, Dr. Delaney. You know Turk Fisher. He's a classmate of mine. Oh, hello, Daddy. Hiya, Doc. What's up? Marie's doing a drawing. <laughs> the track meet. I'm entering the poster competition. Your lunch ain't ready, but it won't take a minute. Here you are, you two. Make yourselves at home. Cottage cheese and buttermilk. How does that sound? Fine. <laughs> what happened to his clothes? Oh, Marie's doing a drawing for her life class, Daddy. Why did she draw with his clothes on? Oh, it's not the same, Doc. You see, this is a life class. They just draw bodies. They all do it right out in the classroom. Well, it's not right. I don't care if they do teach it at college. Marie shouldn't be doing things like that. But he's just posing for her, Daddy. Marie says lots of the athletes do it. They fuss over me because they haven't any children. I gather they had one who died. You know, I can think of more interesting subjects than the Delaney's. Well, you asked me. I just meant he didn't seem to care for me much. Doc is sort of tense. He used to be sick, too, and getting old is no fun, I guess. Yeah. Our age at the time. You said it. We don't want to waste any of it, do we? Now, Turk, you just hold that pose. I'm almost finished. Why doesn't she draw something else? A bowl of flowers or a, or a cathedral or a sunset? Well, all I know, Doc, is that Marie says if she does a good drawing of Turk, they'll use it for the posters in the spring relays. So I guess they don't want sunsets. Suppose somebody walked into the house now. What would they think? Well, if you think it's wrong, Daddy, I won't let them do it again. No, I just don't like it. I don't see any harm in it, Doc. No harm? She's engaged, isn't she? Well, it ain't set yet. All right. If anything happens to that girl, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> Mrs. Delaney. Who cares about her? Telephone. Thanks. Hello? Oh, hi. Aren't we the big shot now? A nice record you chalked up today. Turk was the star of the track meet today. Oh, Turk. Yeah, I'm getting ready now. Uh, I'll, I'll be waiting. Oh, okay. Where are you going, Marie? Big doings tonight. Dance and whatnot. <laughs> I used to be popular, wasn't I, Doc? Remember the homecoming dance? When Charlie Kettlecamp and I won the Charleston contest? Remember how mad you was when he thought he ought to bring me home afterwards? I did not get mad. Oh, yes, you did. Charlie was all right. You was just jealous. I was not jealous. Oh, yes, you were, Doc. You got jealous every time we went any place if I even looked at another boy. There was never anything between Charlie and me, Doc. Honey, there never was. Honey, I'm trying to read. <laughs> Lots of other boys call me up for dates. 
Sammy Knight. Hank Biederman. Dutch McCoy. Sure, baby. You were the it girl. But I saved all my dates for you, didn't I, Daddy? As far as I know. Ah, Doc, I did. You know I did. I never had a date with any other boy but you. Baby, that was a long time ago. It's all forgotten now. Ah, uh, Doc, how can you say that? Those were the happiest times of our lives. I'll never forget them. I'll never forget that spring. It was such a nice spring. The trees were so full and so green, and the air smelled so sweet. Remember the walks we used to take down by the old chapel? It was so quiet and still. That was such a nice spring. In spring, a young man's fancy turns pretty fancy. I was pretty then, wasn't I, Doc? <laughs> Remember the first time you kissed me? You were scared as a young girl. You trembled so. We'd been going together almost a year. And you'd always been so shy. And then that night, for the first time, you grabbed me and kissed me. There was tears in your eyes, Doc. You said you'd love me forever and ever. Remember? You said if I didn't marry you, you just wanted to die. I remember because it scared me to have anybody say anything like that. Yes, baby. And then when it got dark, we stretched out on the cool grass. And you kissed me all night long. Baby, you've got to forget those things. It was 20 years ago. Those years have just vanished. Just vanished into thin air. Maybe you're sorry you married me now, Doc. You didn't know I was going to get old and fat and sloppy. Oh, baby. Well, it's the truth. That's what I am. But I didn't know it either, Doc. Are you sorry you married me? Of course not. I mean, are you sorry you had to marry me? We were never going to talk about that, baby. But, Doc, you was the only one. I'd just die if you didn't believe that, Daddy. I know. You were always so nice and proper. I never thought anything we could ever do together would be wrong or make us unhappy. Do you think we did wrong, Doc? You can't defy convention, I guess. Or the laws of God. But I don't think anybody ever knew about it except my folks. If the baby had lived, everyone would have known. My losing her like that, the way it turned out, you wouldn't have had to marry me. Honey, what's done is done. But it must make you feel bad sometimes to think you had to give up your studies and support a wife. You might have been a real M.D. today. Hey, Marie, don't keep me waiting. Well, I need a coat. Ah, uh, you got me. If the baby lived, she'd be just like Marie. We'd be watching her dressing and going on dates. Lola, people have got to forget the past and live for the present. We all make mistakes. When my family died and left me all that money, I could have gone back and finished somehow, instead of drinking it all up. We could have had a nice house, friends, comforts. Maybe we could have adopted a family since you couldn't have any more. But we don't have any of those things. So what? We gotta keep living, don't we? I can't give up just because I made a few mistakes. I gotta keep going. <laughs> sure, Doc. I know. I better get ready. I'll, I'll walk down to the corner with you, Daddy. Ed Anderson's picking me up. Are you going to be late tonight? I don't know. Saturday night's a bad night down at the hospital. Better not wait up for me. Take 
it easy. Hi, Doc. Sheba, come little Sheba, come back, come back little Sheba. I remember the time they took me to this hospital in a padded limousine, in a straitjacket. I should think you'd try to forget it. Well, if you talk about it enough, you do forget, that's what they tell me. No good trying to bury it or being ashamed. I'm going in there under my own steam now, that's what's important. I was never violent, I had quiet DTs. The noises were all made by the caterpillars in the wall while I kept waiting for them to turn into butterflies. What's the matter, Doc? Sure, it's no picnic, but after a while you get used to it. Looks like we're going to have company. Yeah. Bruce is coming tomorrow night. I'm going to ask him to stay to dinner. Did we know about it? Yeah. She was real pleased. She said she thought it was very thoughtful of me. <sighs> Gotta take this polish back to Miss Kaufman's. Whew, I'm pooped. Honey, don't use that word. It sounds vulgar. Well, I hear Marie say it all the time. I thought it was kind of cute. You don't hear Marie saying it. Her language is refined. Well, Turk then. Somebody. <laughs> Marie studying? No, she went out. I didn't hear her. Let's get some peppy music, huh? I love peppy music. I guess it was because I used to be such a good dancer. Wasn't I, Doc? Doc? Let's dance. Oh, no. Ah, oh, come on, Daddy. You used to be a good dancer. Come on. We ought to go dancing all the time, Doc. If we did, maybe I'd lose some of this fat. Oh, I remember the time when I could dance like this all night and never even noticed it. Oh, oh. Remember the Charleston, Doc? That used to be my specialty. Charleston, Charleston, da dee da 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 dee da da dee 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 Daddy, uh, Marie said she couldn't go out tonight, so I said she could use the power. I'm behind on my chemistry. Turk's going to help me. Oh, you don't have to leave. If we don't bother you, you don't bother us. Well, that's all right. I have to go out anyway. Oh, you do? Forgot to tell you, I have a meeting tonight. I won't be late. That's Marie's scarf. Oh, I borrowed your scarf, honey. Oh, that's all right. Sit down, Turk. Sure is nice of you letting us take over like this, Mrs. Delaney. You got to make hay while she's still smiling at me. Oh, make yourselves at home. I wish they'd both go out and leave us alone. You don't sound much reformed. Well, you give me the ghost signal, baby. I know you women gotta pretend to be offended. But when you come back for more... I'll slap your face. Now, you gonna study or not? I am studying. Is there anything wrong, Doc? 
Well, if you don't know, I can't tell you. You like that fellow, but I say he's no good. Very sweet and innocent. She doesn't understand guys like him. I ought to run him out of the house. Ah, oh, Daddy, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> they always behave so nice, Doc. I know. I watch them. What do you mean, you watch them? Well, nights when you haven't been home, I let them use the parlor. You watch them? Well, you watch young people making love in the movies, Doc. There's nothing wrong with that. They're so sweet and nice. Why shouldn't I watch them? I think it's the sweetest time in life. Makes me feel young again to watch them. He's too coarse for her. He doesn't appreciate it. Don't you understand? Well, why don't you talk to her, Daddy? You know, talk to her like a father. I couldn't do that. Oh, it'll be all right. Bruce will be here soon, and I'm sure Turk won't be around anymore. Good night, Daddy. Have a nice evening, Dr. Delaney. Thanks. Oh, Delaney hits my gut. Oh, he does not. Yes, he does. If you ask me, I think he's jealous. Jealous? Yeah, I've always thought he had a crush on you. Turk, don't be silly. Doc's nice to me. It's just little things he does for me, like fixing my breakfast. He's nice to everyone. You ever make a pass? No, Doc would never get fresh. Well, you better not. Turk, don't be ridiculous. Doc's a real nice, quiet man. If he gets any fun out of running his fingers through my hair, well, why not? Well, he's got a wife of his own, hasn't he? Let him make a few passes at her. Things like that are none of our business. Okay. How about a snuggle, lovely? Not tonight. Well, is tonight different from any other night? I think that we should make it a rule every once in a while to just sit and talk. Okay. What do we talk about? There's lots of things. Okay, start in. A person doesn't start a conversation that way. You can start it any way you want to. Well, two people should have something to talk about, like philosophy or uh, politics, religion. How about sex? Turk. You wanted to talk about something. I was just trying to please. Come on, let's have a kiss. Not tonight. Well, who are you saving it up for? Don't talk like that. Well, thanks, Miss Buckholder, for a nice evening. It's been a most enjoyable talk. Turk, where are you going? I guess I'm a man of action, baby. Turk, don't go. Why not? I'm not doing any good here. Don't go. Why didn't you think about this before? Come on, let's get to work. Turk, this is all we ever do. Are you complaining? No. Then what do you want to put up such a front for? It's not a front. What else is it? Oh, no, Turk. Not tonight, Turk. I want to talk about philosophy, Turk. And all the time, you know that if I went out of here without trying, you'd be sore now, wouldn't you? <laughs> Turk. That's true, isn't it? Maybe. And how about tonight, baby? Can it be lunch? What about Mrs. Delaney? What about Mrs. Delaney? Women sense those things. She has so many questions. She ever say anything? No. Oh, you're imagining things. Maybe. Well, stop it. Okay. Honey, I know I treat you kind of rough at times. I never was very gentlemanly, but you really don't mind it, do you? Anyway, you know I'm not so much. Are you? Now, Miss Buckholder, what's your opinion of the psychodynamic pressure of living in the atomic age? Dirt, don't make fun of me. Let's go to the ram and have a few beers. We'll come back here later when they're asleep. You're 
wearing me down. Oh. Who are you showing off for? The blonde over there. She's drooling at me. Well, I didn't know you so well. I might drool too. <laughs> What time is it, you think? It's time enough for the old folks to be in bed. Come on, let's get going. You're awfully fresh. here to half a block away. Well, I might be leaving late. No sense of waking the Delaney's. That's a good excuse. Let me see. Terry, stop it. Okay, we'll both stay out here then. Suits me. What, no comfy porch swing? Turkey you're becoming a nuisance. Since when have I changed? You recognize my type of first glance. Let me see the key. Go ahead, look. I told you I didn't have it. Come in, said the spider to the fly. You look cute climbing in windows. Isn't it much more fun doing things you shouldn't? Derek, not here. Let's go in the living room. Oh, cut the conversation, will you? You want somebody to hear us? Delaney's will hear us. I'll well, give a girl the chance to breathe. Who's the guy? That's Bruce. He wants to marry me. Can he kiss like I can? Better. He's perfect. And he's in love with me. Sure, that's why he's there and I'm here. But he'll be here tomorrow. What are you trying to pull? I don't go for this. Look, I only meant... I know what you meant, you dames. You're always playing one of us against the other. Him, you gonna tell us a guy named Turk hanging around Turk, me. I don't want to fight. Oh, I don't. I want it. Okay. But don't you come teasing around me anymore.
table? Oh, sure. We have more room this way. A little early for doing this, isn't it? Well, I like to set the table early so I can spend the rest of the day looking at it. <laughs> oh, I've got to get the cups. You feeling better, Daddy? Fine. That's good. Marie, you know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight? No, what? I was awake half the night planning it. I'm going to have stuffed pork chops and twice-baked potatoes and a big chocolate cake. Oh, oh yeah, and tomato juice. Oh, that sounds perfect. Look at this tablecloth, Marie. Oh, it's lovely. Irish linen. Doc's mother gave it to us when we was married. It's lovely. And the china is real Haviland. Oh, it's beautiful. Doc's awful proud of it. You know, anything his mother gave him. Sort of mama's boy. He was the only child, and his mother just thought the sun rose and set in him. What were your parents like? Oh, my father was awful strict. He didn't let me go out with boys, on account of I was so pretty, you know. Once he caught me holding hands with that good-looking Dutch McCoy, he wouldn't let me out after dinner for a whole month. He didn't even want me to marry Doc, you know. Really? Why? Doc's such a gentleman. Well, my dad was just... Well, I, I guess it was because I was so young. But Doc and I moved to the city, and I never went back again. But my mother comes to see me sometimes. All right, I have to get to class. Thanks, Marie. Where's the baking soda? Oh, just a minute, Daddy. I know where it is. I'll get it for him. Oh. I'm sorry you don't feel good. I'll fix it. No, it's no bother. I'm glad to do it for you. There, that'll perk you up. Try and get home early, because we want to give Bruce a royal welcome. You feeling all right? If you wait, Doc, I walk to the corner with you. I've got a class. I'm late. Bye, Daddy. That's funny. I wonder why Doc took his raincoat. It's a beautiful day. There isn't a cloud in sight. My goodness, I've never seen such activity. What got into you? Well, company's coming. Oh. Look at your lilacs, Miss Kaufman. Don't they look nice? Beautiful. My, and you did your spring house cleaning all in one day. Well, I certainly have to hand it to you. All these years, I've been saying to myself that Mrs. Delaney is a good for nothing. <laughs> Sits around the house all day, never even shakes a dust mop. I guess it just goes to show you can never tell about people. Oh, you want some candy? Thank you, Nora. It's say, your dinner smells good. Stuffed pork chops and twice-baked potatoes. Well, that reminds me, my kids must be hungry. Nice. <laughs> Doc's favorite. Oh, I forgot to return your silver polish, Miss Kaufman. Thanks for lending it to me. <laughs> Anytime. Have a nice evening. Thanks. Night. Good night, Miss Kaufman. Mrs. Delaney! Mrs. Delaney? Yeah? Uh, would you help me with this? Oh, sure. Uh, you and Doc won't mind if we eat and run tonight. I know Bruce will want to take me out somewhere. Oh, that's all right, honey. We understand perfectly. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, Marie, that's a beautiful dress. You never wore that before. I know my man. Are you going to marry Bruce, honey? I certainly had. I made up my mind definitely last night. 
I feel kind of sorry for Turk. Oh, he may be sore for a little while, but he has plenty of other girls. He'll get over it. Won't he feel bad? He's had his eye on a pretty little Spanish girl in his history class for a long time. I like Turk, but he's just not the marrying kind. Oh, really? Oh, Bruce. <laughs> you want me to open the door? Yeah, this Can't you get out of it? Not without hurting their feelings. Well, if we have to eat with them, I'd rather take them out. Oh, and not be able to get rid of them later? Who's clever now? Hello there. <laughs> Mrs. Delaney, this is Bruce, finally. How do you do, Bruce? How do you do, ma'am? <laughs> Marie was so excited about your coming. My goodness. I bet you're hungry. <laughs> Maria said some very nice things about you in her letters. Uh, go right in, honey. Bruce, Mrs. Delaney has fixed the grandest dinner for us. Oh, that was to be my treat. I thought we could all go down to my hotel and celebrate. Have a few cocktails first. Oh, we can have cocktails here, too, can't we, Marie? I'll get them. She even cleaned the house for you. Did she? It was just one of those things. It's too bad. It just would be when I needed him most. Sure you don't need any help? Oh, no, honey. Everything's all ready. Marie, you sit here, honey. Hmm? Thank you. And Bruce, will you sit here? Thank you. Three's a crowd, so I'm just going to serve you two lovebirds. There's no hurry. Oh, sure. We've got to start, because the, the food will all spoil. Let's have some candles, huh? Here, let me do that. Oh. Thanks, Bruce. I always think candlelight's so romantic. If you'll just excuse me, just a minute. Hello? Oh, Ed. Have you seen Doc? He, he went out this morning and he hasn't come home yet. And we're having company for dinner. Well, no, but you know, you know that bottle of whiskey we had in the kitchen all this time? Well, Doc's never gone near it. And tonight I was going to make drinks for the company, and I went to get it, and it was gone. No, I don't think so. Oh, he said, he said this morning his stomach was kind of upset. Would you, Ed? Oh, thanks, Ed. Thanks a million times. Oh, yes, I, I'll be here. I'm afraid it's a little too late for cocktails, but tomato juice is real good for you. Oh, that's all right. I'm high already. I'm getting my girl back. <laughs> sure you won't eat with us? Oh, no, honey. I'm not a bit hungry. Well. What about a little music, huh?
Oh, Ed, it's Mrs. Delaney again. I hated to call you so early, Ed, but I just had to. Did you find Doc? No. No, he hasn't. He probably will, won't come home until he's had all he can drink and wants to go to sleep. Well, I don't know what else to think, Ed. I'm scared. I'm awfully scared. If I need you later on, will you come over? Thanks. Are you all right, Daddy? Where's the morning paper? I want to see the morning paper. We don't get any morning paper, Doc. You know that. Then I suppose I'm drunk or something. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, no, Daddy. Then get me the morning paper. Yes, sure, Doc. Here we are. Now, you sit right there and be quiet. Why shouldn't I be quiet? Nothing, Doc. Nothing, Doc. Doc? You sure you're all right? Of course I'm all right. Doc, where have you been? And what business of yours where I've been? Daddy, Just I... Just let me alone. That's all I ask. Doc, why did you do it? You said you'd be home early, and I had a nice dinner all fixed for Bruce, and you never came. Bruce. A big dinner for Bruce. But it was for you, too, Doc. Well, I don't want it. Ah, Daddy, don't get mad. Where's Marie? I don't know, Daddy. She, she didn't come home last night. She went out with Bruce. I suppose you've peeked through the keyhole and applauded. Like you did with Marie and Turk. Ah, oh, Daddy, don't say things like that. He's a nice boy, Daddy. They're going to be married. Probably has to marry her. Just because she's pretty and he got amorous one day. Just like I had to marry you. Oh, no, Daddy. You and Marie are both a couple of sluts. Daddy, please don't talk like that. What are you good for? You can't even get up in the morning and cook my breakfast. I, I will, Doc. I will. You won't even it. sweep the floors until some bozo comes along and makes love to Marie. And then you fix things up like... like Buckingham Palace. Or a Chinese joint with perfume on the lamp bulbs. 
and flowers and china. Gold rim china. China my mother gave us. My mother didn't buy these dishes for slut seed off. Doug. Gotta get me a drink. No, Daddy. Daddy, please don't. Daddy, please don't. You stay away from me. Doc. Doc, you know what it does to you. Oh, I know what it does to me. Makes me want to come home and look at you, you. I'm going to have another and another. Ed, Ed, he's home. Can you come over, Ed? He's drinking again. I don't know what to do with him. Get away from that phone! Can you come over, Ed? Please come. He's got a knife! No, Daddy! No, no, Doc. Please, Daddy. That's right. Telephone. Tell the whole world that I'm drunk. Scream your head off, you fat slut. Go on and holler. Holler so the neighbors will think I'm beating you. Where's Bruce now? On the Marie's bed? You got all fresh and pretty for him, didn't you? Comb your hair for once. You even wash the back of your neck and put on a girdle. Daddy, please don't talk like that. I'd rather you hit me, Doc. I can't bear to have you say things like that. Talking cr crazy. I'm making sense for the first time in my life. You didn't think I knew about it, did you? I heard him sneaking in there that night. I saw them. And you knew about it all the time, and you thought you were putting something over on me. Oh, I didn't, Doc. I didn't know anything about it. I'm hey, You're crazy if you think I didn't know. We're running a regular Lonely Hearts place. It's probably been gone off for years, ever since we were married. No, no, it's not true, Doc. You're lying! No, Daddy! Daddy, please! No, Doc! Daddy! No. Well, none of that's going to happen anymore. I'm going to fix you now. What's the problem? No, Doc! Don't do this to me, Daddy! Daddy! Doc, it's me! Lola! Lady. Yes, I'm all right. Some men will be here pretty soon. Everything will be all right. We got here as soon as we could. You tried to use that knife on you? I'm all right. We can't leave him here if he's playing around with knives. Doc, it's Ed and Elmo. We're going to take care of you. Yeah, it's off me. How much has he had, Mrs. Delaney? I don't know. He hasn't been home since yesterday morning. He's been dry for a long time. It's hit him hard. Shall I get him some coffee? No, he's past that. Now, come on, Doc. Get out of here, the both of you. This is my house. We're taking you with us, Doc. Where are you going to take him? City hospital. We have to. No. No, I don't. Oh, wait. Don't take me there. That's where they put the crazy people. Now, look, Doc. If you don't come along peacefully, we're going to call the cops and you'll have to wear off this jag in the cooler. And you wouldn't like that, would you? Come on, Elmo. OK. OK, I'll go. Just, just give me one more drink, please. No, Daddy, please don't. Another drink can't make much difference now. OK, Doc, we're going to give you a drink. Take a good one. It's going to be your last for a long, long time. He'll be there three, four days. Then he'll be home. Good as new. no place for you. You'll only be in the way. Is there anything more I can do for you? No, I guess not. Keep busy, Mrs. Delaney. Keep busy and forget it. Yes. 
So I'm going to keep busy, Miss Kaufman. Look at this mess. And he'd been behaving so long. I'll get it. Hello? Yes? Mrs. Delaney, I'll get it. A telegram from Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Cunningham. Yes, yes, I'm listening. Mary, tonight. Yes. Mrs. Delaney, you mustn't. Mrs. Delaney! Thanks. You better send it over later. Delaney. Is he all right, Ed? I had to come. He gets scared without me. This is Mrs. Delaney. Howdy, ma'am. Can I see him now? You can go back and see him later if you like. We just gave him a sedative. No, I, I gotta see him now. All right, come with me. Not in here. He's safer here. He tried to throw himself out of the car. trying to say something. Who's Lola? Pretty Lola. He keeps mumbling, Pretty Lola. That's me. Miss Delaney. You want to come in for a cup of coffee? No, thanks. We were just having breakfast when you called. We'll get some sleep now. Long distance? I want Maple 240. This is Valley 846. Hello, Mom? It's Lola, Mom. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, I know, Mom, but Doc's sick again. Do you think Dad would mind very much if I came home for a little while? I'm awfully unhappy, Mom. Don't you think just for a little while? Just until I made up my mind what to do? All right, Mom. Oh, no. No, it wouldn't do any good for you to come here. I'll, I'll let you know if I need you. Thanks, Mom. And tell Daddy hello.
You forgot your bag, Doc. I don't know how to thank you. We'll see you later. If there's any trouble, I'll... You can call us anytime. So long, Doc. And good luck. Daddy, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Honey, please don't stand there like that. Like I was gonna... I'm sorry, Doc. How have you been? Oh, I'm all right. I've been fine. I got a letter and a telegram from Marie. She and Bruce got married. After all, I'm worrying about her. Did you like Bruce? Oh, he was awful nice, Doc. Just like I expected. And Marie wrote something awful nice. She said you really kept her from falling for Turk. I hope she'll be happy. Oh, sure, Doc. We're going to be happy too, Daddy. Did they treat you all right? Honey, don't ever leave me. Please don't ever leave me. I don't know what I did or what I said. I can hardly remember anything. But please forgive me, please. I'll try to make everything up. Oh, I never leave you, Daddy. You're all I got, Doc. You're all I ever had. I feel better already. Yes, so do I. Did you have any breakfast? No. Uh, when the doctor told me I could go this morning, I, I thought I'd wait till I got here and make breakfast myself. Oh, no, I'll get you some breakfast, Daddy. You come on out in the kitchen and I'll get you a nice hot breakfast. I'll scramble you some eggs. Come on, Doc. You sit down and I'll get you your fruit juice. And we got bacon too, Doc. My, it's expensive now, you know. There you are, Daddy. I'll light the oven and make you some toast. And Doc, we got orange marmalade. It looks different here. Oh, sure, I fixed it all up. We got new curtains, and I painted the icebox. Looks nice. And it's gonna stay nice, too, Daddy. Oh, I had another dream the other night, Doc. About little Sheba? Oh, it was about everything and everybody. Marie and I was going to the Olympics. Only it was back in our old high school stadium. And there was thousands of people there. And Turk was out in the middle of the field throwing the javelin. And every time he'd throw it, the crowd would roar. Oh, and you know who the man in charge was? My father. <laughs> but Turk kept changing into somebody else, so my father disqualified him. And then he had to sit on the sidelines. And guess who took his place, Daddy? You. <laughs> you came trotting out on the field just as big as you please. Well, how'd I do, baby? Oh, fine, Daddy. You picked up the javelin, you know, like it was real heavy. But you threw it, Doc. You threw it clear up in the sky. And it never came down again. And then it started to rain. And I was going nearly crazy because I couldn't find little Sheba. And there were so many people there, you know, I didn't know where to look for her. And you was waiting to take me home. 
So we walked and walked through the mud and the slush. And the people was all crowding around us. And then, this is the sad part, Daddy. All of a sudden, I saw a little Sheba. She was lying out in the middle of the field, dead. I felt terrible, Doc. Nobody else paid any attention. But I cried and cried. It made me feel awful, that, that sweet little puppy. Her white fur all smeared with mud. And no one to stop and take care of her. Well, well why couldn't you? I wanted to, Doc, but you wouldn't let me. You kept saying, we can't stay here, honey. We gotta go on. We gotta go on. <laughs> Ain't that strange? Dreams are funny. I don't think little sheep is ever coming back, Doc. I ain't gonna call her anymore. Not much point in it, baby. I guess she's gone for good. I'll fix your eggs. It's good to be home. 